Good morning, everyone. On behalf of ECCI and uh, Disperse, I'd like to welcome you all to this learning session today. Uh, I, I thank all of you who was able to join on time and some of you even earlier. Thank you for uh, uh, making time today. Uh, we have a very short uh, session, but you know quite a few things to cover. So I'm going to jump straight in. Um, and while while I do that, I'm going to quickly uh, remind ourselves of the webinar and the learning uh, topic today: uh, learning at scale. Um, so we have two great speakers: um, uh, Vineet, uh, a dear friend and the head of uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, for Disperse and uh, Ibu Kanya joining us from Jakarta, who heads uh, Next Gen Academy uh, at AIA in Indonesia. But before uh, you know, we get to the speakers, and, and myself, I'm Karthik, I'm, I'm based in Manila. I, I can see some very familiar names in the, in the, in the participants list. Thank you for taking time once again. Uh, I, I handle the regional operations for ECCI. So before I, I pass the floor to our uh, uh, wonderful speakers to, to give us some insights on, on this topic, uh, I'd like to just you know, take not more than two minutes to set, set some context uh, and, and coming out of this uh, pandemic and, and sort of getting into uh, you know, a pre-pandemic mode, if I can use that word, uh, but, you know, just being uh, cautious on what that means, uh, getting back to a, a sort of a normal that we are, you know, all uh, going to call uh, or has, you know, been called so far the next normal and, and new normal in some cases, right? So, so to set context for, for them to come in and share some insights, I sort of put out, you know, uh, three uh, phrases, if I may, uh, if I may, which we all have sort of heard, um, maybe used, uh, read, and, and most importantly, many of you uh, experienced uh, over the last uh, few years. Of course, um, the pandemic has sort of uh, fast-tracked change in so many ways and areas uh, that we, you know, many of us may not have uh, uh, expected. But, but we are all used to change, right? So, so uh, the pandemic definitely, you know, fast track the whole uh, process, especially from a learning, organizational learning perspective. Uh, we've been saying for a while, the way organizations learn and grow has changed, you know, or has been changing. The pandemic has definitely changed it uh, forever. It might never be the same way we, we knew it from the past. In 2010, I remember, uh, a study which said uh, globally, 67% of the learning happened uh, in, in physical or face-to-face -face mode, and 33% was largely using other modes, basically, or not necessarily just e-learning or virtual or on the job, etc. But 33% but was predominantly in other areas. Now, while there is no formal study since that I've seen which says how this has changed, I'm sure you all uh, agree that the, the last 24 months has probably you know, changed that number significantly. Uh, while there is a possibility of you know, certain areas pulling back, I think uh, the reality is the way we learn has definitely changed. And there are more avenues, more media forms, uh, more, uh, 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 shall we say, um, opportunities as well as uh, approaches that organizations are adopting and, and innovating. Now, on the other hand, this is, this is of course, backed largely by uh, probably, you know, one of the most uh, abused words in the last uh, two years, digital transformation, but also something that has been on the cards for over a decade now. Uh, so, which has led to a sort of a surge in, in, in solutions uh, you know, good or bad, you know, we need to, in this case, when we say solutions, we are largely talking about digital solutions, uh, things that are associated with technology, you know, uh, uh, internet, online, uh, and, and tools related to that. And there, there's been a surge in that area. 
different organization or different organizations are at different levels of appetite and therefore uh, that you know going through the change in a certain level of uh, speed uh, but again it is something that is here to stay and lastly there has been a growing sort of uh, acknowledgement it's it's always been understood but you know understanding is one thing acknowledging is you know sort of the next step then you know there is there has to be appreciation and then application right in, in that uh, sort of continuum there has been a very conscious move and uh, and i must say to the extent where there is a shift in the in the needle amongst uh, cxos to the fact that there is a significant need for alignment between the business strategy and the organizational learning strategy the need for learning uh, is is exemplified now you know accentuated now more than ever in the last uh, uh, decade again uh, thanks to uh, the importance that has come about for uh, talent and their uh, value to to the business so so this alignment basically is is also becoming extremely critical whether you're a small business is you know in fact it's even more spelled out in a small business or you know a medium or a global business basically so all these point to the direction that you know uh, there is a need for managing learning effectively content alone does not solve the problem content is king and still remains so but the governance around it ensuring that the organization can if not take control influence the way learning happens and the way uh, talent grows within the organization is becoming extremely critical for the type of growth that businesses are looking for uh, uh, in a sustained manner so all of this is pointing us to uh, the, the direction that that we chose to uh, address you know, through the learning uh, topic today and that's where you know i'd like our uh, friends from disperse and aia to share some learnings and experience from the region on on how organizations are tackling uh, this 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 scenario in their own way basically right so from the experiences that have been gained and and that's where i want to sort of stop and uh, pass the floor to uh, our speakers starting with uh, vineet um like i said you know very quick word vineet is is a dear friend and an inspirational leader and 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 an accomplished professional in the area of digital learning adoption uh, at different levels right at academe as well as at, at enterprise level uh, in 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 markets and and uh, helping uh, organizations grow especially those that are on on fast track basically so uh, i'd like to uh, welcome we need to share some experiences to to start with on this topic of learning at scale and and uh, we'll take it from there uh, thank you i we need over to you hey good morning good morning kartik good morning book anya and morning everyone who has joined for this webinar firstly you know i would like to thank all of you for giving us this opportunity and especially ecci team for organizing this you know it's it's wonderful for me to you know connect with professionals like you who are from the hr and the lnd space and who kind of are addressing as a, a a challenging uh, problem of not only learning and development but actually you know understanding how the market is changing especially post pandemic uh, i'll call it post pandemic assuming that it's over now and how you know learning at scale can be given the right direction and uh, the direction has to be definitely provided by the management team in every company and which is nothing but the hr and the lnd professionals who themselves need to have a a little bit of a mindset change and i'll be talking about that more today about how we have been working with companies uh in this challenging space of learning and development and skilling and how we have been able to work with them to kind of have a clear cut business impact as far as learning at scale is concerned uh with this as a short introduction 
uh, what I'll do, I'll quickly share my screen. Uh, can you can you see my screen? Yeah. Perfect. So just to start, you know, the first thing is what's the problem as far as learning at scale is concerned, right? Like the first uh, problem with what I see is that is the mindset. And when I say mindset, whether it's the it's the management, it's the it's the you know HR teams, it's L and D teams, or it's the employees. It's like a complete ecosystem where we look at learning purely from a classroom training and a set of professional courses. You know that means I'm an employee. For me, it's every year it's mandatory to attend certain classroom training programs because that's very very uh, very, very uh, regulatory or compulsory for me. And I need to attend certain professional courses because they are something which I need to complete for my role, whether it's for a banking professional, something like anti-money laundering, for a manufacturing uh, professional, whether it's something like you know uh, safety training. So that's how we look at learning and development, mostly across organizations. And we look at as a platform more from an administrative aspect to manage this learning and development. And if you look at uh, for the workforce of today, they are actually not fully ready for their jobs because what is needed for the jobs in terms of overall knowledge and overall you know, practical application of that knowledge cannot be confined to just few courses and classroom training. It has to be something which is on the go, which continuously happens. And the best way what we saw is to align this knowledge, align this vast pool of content or resources which is available to a specific individual is by the means of skills. So that's where we focus on with a lot of companies where we kind of implement the solution. We try to understand within the company, where are you in the industry and what are the roles which you have and how is globally everyone looking at that role? That means for that role, what are the skills which are needed to kind of have a great business impact? That means business impact can be faster onboarding, getting the employee job ready very quickly or taking them to the next level of knowledge as per best industry standards. So obviously COVID-19 has disrupted the market where digitization has got a push, but still, you know, over a period of these two years, as far as learning and development is concerned, you know, companies have moved to learning platforms because they feel that online is important. But actually, how do you connect an online strategy to a great platform where you can directly show a business impact is something which is still kind of a missing link between the whole puzzle. So, uh, so the question comes when you talk about, you know, skilling as an important thing within the race. How do we shift from something like a first generation? Like first generation platforms are platforms what we call as, you know, content repository platforms or learning management systems to something which is like second generation. So for, uh, for people who, who know about LMSs and who know about the new platforms which are known as LXPs, I mean, the visual representation is something like this, you know, LMS is something which is like a box, you know, PC and an LXP is something which is, you know, performs the same kind of humongous tasks through a very unified and a simplified view of a, of a MacBook or a mobile. That's how I would say that learning platforms have moved from the first generation to the second generation. Earlier, it was all stuck to classroom. It was all related to you know compulsory trainings where you put in a you know a, a disc inside whereas now as far as second generation is concerned it's become learning on the go 
it's become learning on the cloud and it cannot be confined to merely classrooms or some courses. So the first generation systems were, of course, the learning management systems, very administrative in nature, kind of focused on mandatory training. And the stakeholders, I mean, who were responsible to make this learning platform successful were only two. That is the HR and the l and team. That means it's, it's completely their ownership. They have to drive this. They have to ensure that the completion rates are high. That was the first generation. So the impact was poor adoption because, you know, it was like the l and and the HR team chasing everyone for completion of their, you know, learnings, which are mandatory. Now, if you look at the second generation, it's moved into something known as micro learning platforms. That means these are simplified, very unified, great user experience platforms which at the back end have good content catalogs. And all the learning has moved mobile, it's on the go, and there's a lot of AI being used on the platform. That means AI plays the role of personalized learning, which ensures that not everything is administratively left on just the l and and the HR teams. And if you look at the stakeholders of this, these second generation platforms, which we call as skilling platforms or learning experience platform. It's not just the HR and LND team. It now also involves managers because managers have features where they can actually look at learning analytics of team members. They can also coach the team members and mentoring or shadowing has become a very, very important aspect of learning. And also the third aspect has been social learning. So if you see, there are different stakeholders who get together to ensure that the culture of skilling is there in the organization. And when this happens, you see that learning is happening at scale because there is HR and L&D at the front end and the back end boxing the learning and development initiative. And then within that box, multiple stakeholders are playing great roles, whether it's the managers who are actually coaching their team members, recommending them some new learnings, whether e-learning, whether attending classroom trainings, whether it is mentor-mentee relationship building, or whether it's social learning and enablement happening across various layers. So that's where the second generation platforms have come into play over and above the first generation. And that's where the learning at scale is really having a meaning or an impact. Now, all these sounds at a very high level, right? Now, how do we ensure that we can actually build these second level you know, learning platforms or second generation learning platform? One is, of course, we have to, the, the learning catalogs or the content available, just like, it's like an ocean. If you go into Google, there is so much of content available. There are so many videos, there are so many articles, but how do we ensure that these are relevant to an employee or a learner. That's where the currency of skills comes into a great play. That means skills have to be the core of any learning platform. That means we should understand whether if it's a company, whether it's a, at an industry level, at a, at, a, at a department level, and at a job role level, what's the you know, hierarchy of skills which are needed and the content needs to be tagged to that skill. Once the skill to content tagging happens, then comes the other, you know, features like, of course, it has to be AI driven and personalized. It has to be blended. It just cannot be e-learning, e-learning. It has to be a mix of e-learning, online webinars and classrooms. There has to be skill measurement. That means we should see that if a role, ha a role has 12 identified skills on which they need to be built, how are we ensuring that while completing that learning relevant to that skills, there is a clear business impact at workplace, whether it's faster onboarding, whether it is better performance at role or having higher level of knowledge for that role as per the industry standard. And of course, everything has to be role-based, has to have career intelligence built into it. You can add content, 
has to be social learning and you can have multiple graphs to view at a company level at a department level at a team level where managers play come into a play whether at an individual level how are you having this visibility of roles to skills and career advancement so that's where you know companies now need to think about introducing a a new skill driven learning culture uh, why now because if you see employees need knowledge relevant to their role whether it's the current role and or future role this is a key challenge which 80% of employees face and 87% of the employees are not actively engaged at work because they are not thinking new or innovating and 20% of employees are going to be forced to think newly because the job roles are changing they are becoming very dynamic and one out of every five jobs is going to become obsolete and these are some gartner reports and forbes report which talk about these data points about 80% 87% and 20% so when you look at these key challenges right one of the important thing is what is needed for current role how future role aspirations within an organization are becoming very important and how we can make an employee learn new think new and innovate so innovation has become very important because an employee's productivity goes down if they are doing the same job the same way for a long time it's important to move them to to a same job in a different and a more impactful kind of a way or move them to a new role where again learning development and skilling becomes a key initiative if you want to do it at scale so we need to create a culture of learning and we need to also motivate employees to do things better and that doesn't mean that we forget about the uh, traditional ways of learning whether it's you know something like pre onboarding ensuring the joining happens in a very structured way induction and onboarding career pathways like mandatory training will still be part of the core platforms which are the lxps and the skilling platforms but we are going to have do it in a much more collaborative way where everyone shares their experiences that's the only fourth thing which gets added and which makes it really collaborative and that's where learning at scale comes into play now i'll, I'll just talk about skills a little bit skills are nothing but knowledge and an ability to implement that knowledge so there are you know there are contextual skills or functional skills which can be skills which are needed to perform a role very effectively within the company then there are foundation skills that means what is the industry doing relevant to that role and then there are individual leadership skills and then there are meta skills that means your experience to practically implement your knowledge gain at the workplace to make it impactful and when the skills are so you know elaborative an lms or a learning management system that integrates with merely a content catalog does not become a skilling platform or cannot give you learning at scale a pure lms with some thousand learning modules or you know courses is not the solution to the problem the problem is much vast you know the problem is where there the learning has to be you know scaled to a level where the platforms not only act like a learning management system but they become a knowledge repository where the knowledge transfer and sharing happens in a very very continued manner and it happens on a great platform and where content from outside world as karthik mentioned content will always be the king so you have tons of content available whether it's harvard business reviews forbes ey articles ted talks youtubes mckinsey articles many more and all this is available freely but the idea is how can you take this free content to an employee where it sounds very relevant to them and where actually when they go through this content in in the right dosages they can increase their knowledge and they can have a business impact and that's where the platform has to play a key role 
And I'm not saying that it all has to be e-learning. It has to be blended. Mixing e-learning with you know, online webinars on Zooms, MS Teams, and other platforms, and classroom trainings. So that's what we call as culture of learning, whether it is communities, building community-based social learning, bringing gamification, and bringing AI to personalize learning and reduce administrative work on HR and L&D professionals. And at the end, you know, all of you will say that, hey, we have heard a lot about, you know, how these skilling and learning platforms can be implemented, but there are key challenges. How do you address them, right? One is, of course, the challenge that, you know, like that data is very critical. So that's where, you know, platforms are, making these courses offline. That means on a click of a button, you can have it offline. Second, and the most important is that maybe learning is boring. And you know that's where you need to have the platform with a great user interface, something like a Facebook, which everybody adopts, something like a WhatsApp, which is so easy to use, something like a, a messenger where you are connected in a, you know, just by sending a message. So that's where the platforms have evolved. So that one is you have different formats of content and learning is not boring. That means even the e-learning content is very, very you know, interactive. And second, learning is not just restricted to e-learning. It, it's mixed with online webinars. It's mixed with classroom training. And that's where the blended approach is taken. And of course, it has to be social. And the last is, you know, you know, our employees don't have time to complete a lot of learnings. That's because the way we need to deliver learning has to be micro learning. That means it has to be something like if most of our customers follow a philosophy of 10 minutes learning a day, that means in a day you can do learning 10 minutes, which is on the go. You could do it from mobile. You could again, you know, access the same module from then from the same duration on a web, on a web based laptop or a you know desktop and just focus on bite-sized learning and 10 minutes learning in a day if that's done very effectively coupled up with you know added with a couple of webinars over a period of one month limited classroom training that itself will give a lot of new perspective to an employee because there's a lot of outside world information coming in which is being funneled very well for their job roles and for their career aspirations. So, so that's where you know platforms like Disperse or others have had an edge because they're not just learning management systems. They have combined the learning management system for administrative aspects, whether it's reports, what you need with the learning experience platforms. And that's our offerings in the market. We do have the learning management system we have a learning experience platform and we have the frontline enablement platform, which is mainly for distributed workforce, like workforce like AIA insurance, where you know our next panelist uh, is going to speak of how they are using the platform for a different kind of learners, which are the frontline learners. That means they're mostly on the field sites, they're distributed across geographies or locations and they are always on the move. So that's why the learning has to be bite-sized. It has to be very, very, you know, very, very impactful. And it has to be delivered to them on the go. Yeah. Which is, again, a problem to be addressed of learning at scale. Great. Thanks. Thanks uh, uh, for, you know, listening to me and uh, understanding, you know, how we look at learning platforms uh, at Disperse. And I've been here for four years. I have you know implemented this solution uh, for more than 65 companies and of course while doing these implementations i have learned from stakeholders more than what i could give to them that what were the challenges and how technology can play a role to address those challenges and i understood very quickly that skills is going to be the new currency if you want to purchase any role that means if you want to be very effective on a role. You have to build your skills and those can be built not just internally. It has to be an internal and external approach. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. Over to uh, you, Karthik. 
Thank you so much, Vineet, uh, for sharing. That was uh, uh, really insightful. And in many cases, probably given the, the, the background our colleagues uh, on the call are coming from, perhaps uh, uh, um, uh, a reassurance of uh, some of the experiences that they have gone through so far. And maybe for others, an experience that they're all waiting to uh, sort of get into as well. So thank you for that. Uh, now, you know, we are getting to, I guess, the, uh, uh, the, the other side, if I may, of the uh, table and, and to listen from uh, someone who has implemented this and experienced the, the whole transformation of learning within the organization. We have Ibu Kanya. Uh, thank you for making time. Uh, she comes with, uh, you know, over 15 years of uh, experience in the learning and talent management field, uh, specifically in the financial services sector. Uh, and now heads uh, the agency Next Gen Academy at AIA, uh, and and you know has been trained by uh, McKinsey, has been part of as well as led the development of competency-based learning programs. Uh, so uh, we are, we are very uh, uh, thankful to have uh, you, Abu Ibukanya. Thank you, and we we look forward to your sharing. Over to you. Thank you, Gatni. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, let me introduce myself as uh, Katnit already introduced uh, earlier. My name is Kania Risianti. Uh, currently, uh, I'm in charge for agency uh, Next Gen Academy in AIA Indonesia. As you might be aware that uh, because I'm handling the agency, I'm not per se uh, training the employee, but uh, currently, uh, the the participant from our training is our agent, which is uh, they are our partners to deliver uh, the AIA products to the customer. So uh, maybe uh, I want to share a little bit on how we uh, transform our uh, training journey from the very traditional way. Uh, previously, we only use uh, in-class training into uh, digital way uh, because uh, starting in 2020, we start using the digital platform to expand our uh, learning and also to increase our uh, learning experience from the uh, participant. Uh, let me share my screen first. Okay. <clears throat> okay, can you see my screen? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, uh, everybody, uh, our <clears throat> in AIA, uh, yes, we we already have all the training uh, starting the beginning. But uh, again, as uh, earlier mentioned, that we have to align the business result with the training strategy. That's starting in twenty twenty two. Uh, our agency doing the revamping. Yeah, we we create our new learning roadmap according to the business need. So we focusing on what is the business need and how we in training side can uh, support the business uh, to achieve their goals. But again, at that time, we still focusing on the in class training because uh, as you might be aware that Indonesia is very large country and the audience uh, came from all the town in Indonesia, all the city in Indonesia. So uh, in that days, we train uh, our agent face-to-face uh, -face in class training in several city. And again, something happened in uh, March 2022, especially from Indonesia, uh, which uh, COVID uh, pandemic is starting. So we have to change our way of working, including the uh, training delivery method itself. So uh, in only about two months, we change uh, our delivery training from uh, uh, in-class training into virtual classroom. 
again, uh, we facing a lot of challenges because uh, some of our agent is still from old generation that usually they uh, more familiar with uh, virtu uh, sorry with uh, in class training. So when we change to virtual, we have to train them how to use uh, virtual uh, classroom uh, using uh, Zoom or MS Team, etc. So that's very crucial time for us because we have to relook again from our uh, training roadmap how we can uh, adjust the content, the delivery method into the virtual classroom. So another way around to ensure the training materials uh, can be received and digest by our uh, agent. We also built our first digital learning content, which is uh, in, in form of uh, video learning. And we distributed it uh, through our uh, social media and instant messenger platform. Because at, at that time, we uh, haven't used any uh, LMS platform. So uh, we spread all the uh, digital learning content or video learning through uh, social media or instant messaging platform. And starting from July 2022, we collaborate with Disperse. So we start uh, using Disperse, Disperse as our uh, platform, uh, learning management platform, and we introduce our AI Next, so the new experience of learning. At that time, uh, we are not only provided uh, video learning, digital learning content, and also we integrate our uh, virtual classroom uh, using the AI. So everything uh, the agents need to learn, they can access through one apps only. Uh, we call it an AI Next. So uh, everything, the roadmap, the journey, the training, uh, classroom, uh, the video, the self-learning, we provided in uh, through our uh, LMS or AI Next. And then starting from August 2022 until now, we uh, steadily uh, transform our uh, digital learning journey because uh, we want uh, AI Next or Disperse uh, become one-stop solution for learning and development. So uh, currently we use uh, various methods of learning such as uh, self-paced learning, uh, starting from uh, pre-induction. So uh, in our uh, induction program, the agent should uh, learn the pre-induction through uh, AI Next uh, using self-paced uh, self learning. And after that, they uh, will attend the classroom or virtual classroom and uh, following with uh, the experience-based learning and also the social learning uh, in uh, using the AI Next. Currently, we are, uh, we are on process in development to personalize learning journey because we believe that uh, learning should uh, support the business need. So in that way, uh, currently we are looking for uh, how to integrate because uh, as uh, Finet already mentioned that uh, this person already have the capability for it. So we want to uh, combine or we want to merge all the activity management, the result from the business and for uh, learning itself to create our personalized uh, learning journey to our agency, to our uh, agent in all uh, agency in AIA. So uh, in uh, that sense, I, uh, I want to tell you that uh, learning currently not only uh, doing or sitting in the class and listen to the teacher to uh, to share or to, to teach us the material but uh, we can create all uh, all the variation to enable the agent can learn at, uh, at their time on their way uh, 
uh, on their uh, flavor, how uh, to increase their, uh, their skill, to catch up uh, and to uh, achieve the business goals. Maybe uh, that's all uh, that I can share. Uh, feel free if there is any question for my presentation. Thank you. Uh, Excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bukanya. That was very, uh, very useful, and 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 uh, I must say, uh, generous as well to to share the actual experiences as the that the organization went through uh, uh, during uh, what you call the learning transformation journey. And and I presume, obviously, this transformation does not stop here. You have yes. plans yes. to move forward as well to to become uh you know uh, more more forward looking and uh and addressing the needs um great Th thank you uh we need as well so now you know we have the speakers uh and and you know i'm glad we did a good time as well i'm sure you know you, you probably restricted some of the information that you wanted to share given the time limits uh so here's an opportunity we have another you know 10 to 15 minutes uh, for the participants to raise any questions uh, uh, that they have. Uh, let me try and just moderate this. Um, uh, so for starters, uh, so all of you learners here, please feel free to type away your questions in the Q&A uh, uh, button that you see at the bottom. I see one question now, I'm gonna quickly read out. And I have you know, a couple of questions myself. Uh, we need, that's not often allow us to talk with uh, Scania, so now is a good opportunity to do that. So the first question I have here is, what suggestions do you have for organizations planning to digitize their l &D processes? Um, I think it's a common question, I guess. Uh, if we can get both perspectives, that would be useful. Uh, if we perhaps, ladies first, we could ask Scania if you could take that to begin with as a, as somebody who has gone through this process uh, yourself, um, I, I'm sure the, the answer would be different based on the maturity level of the organization, but, but if you can share some insights. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Maybe uh, as I shared earlier that uh, for us, moving to digital is a very huge leap because uh, most of them are still using a traditional way of uh, learning. So uh, what we start to uh, to move is to uh, just using a small step at every time, not a very quantum leap to to become a fair uh, to or to adopt the most current technology, but uh, using step a uh, small step uh, at every time, starting to convert uh, from. Uh, usually a uh, virtual classroom or uh, in-class classroom to uh, small or bite-sized learning that they can do at any time. And then after that, we introduce another, uh, another uh, step of uh, learning such as uh, social uh, learning or maybe mentor mentee through social, uh, social or through LMS platform. That's uh, the things that we do. So we didn't do the uh, revolutionary, not revolutionary, uh, revolutionary uh, changing, but at the staging uh, with small steps, so everybody can uh, can uh, keep up with the changes itself. But again, it's depend on uh, the maturity of the organization itself. Thank you so much, Vinit. Yeah. Yeah, just to add on to this, right? Uh, normally, when for organizations are taking the digitization for the first time or they're new adopters, it's not necessary that you have to change everything in the first six months or even first one year, depending upon the size. So when we work with LD teams, what we kind of discuss with them is that why don't you look at three critical things where you want to bring a change, right? For example, let's say there is one very important training program within the company, which was normally done very, very classroom way. 
just one of them. There might be 10 to 12 programs within a company. Just pick up that one training program and first move it to blended, not fully online. Like move it to a mix of, break it into a couple of e-learning modules, online webinars and some classrooms. That means you reduce the classroom hours and move it to online and completely e-learning. So that is, we can pick up one course and really brainstorm and deliver that effectively. Second is, you could also pick up one role, like a specific role, like a business development executive. So let's say you have 50 executives there and they are almost most of the time on the field side. So pick up the one role and understand what are the skills they need and take a skill-based approach and build the learning for that role itself. And again, break it into e-learning, webinars, classrooms, some online courses like that. And third is, you could also take an important you know, L&D initiative like onboarding. Every employee who comes to organization does onboarding. Why don't you make the onboarding highly impactful and blended? So that's how we, at three different layers, you can start introducing digitization. One is at a training program level, pick one, pick one training program, pick one role and pick one thing which everybody in the company does, which is like onboarding and move them digital. Initially move them blended and then later on maybe training programs, you can start moving them fully digital also, like completely e-learning. I mean, that's, that's the way we can do it. Excellent. Thank you. I think those are very useful perspectives. Uh, what I mean, there is no one way or there is no right way as one you know, as as we have sort of experienced all along. So 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 horses for the courses, so to speak. Uh, I have one question while while we you know wait for any further questions that come up. Uh, uh, Kanya, so just just drawing parallels, Philippines and Indonesia have a lot of similarities. So by landscape, you know, both an archipelago, the extent of uh, uh, infrastructure that's available when it comes to internet, uh, the amount of adoption that is uh, uh, there amongst uh, consumers who are, you know, at the end of the day, our learners as well within the organization uh, through social media. So all these that are, we can draw a lot of similarities. So given that, what you know was the main challenge that you faced uh, while adopting uh, you know uh, a solution like disperse or for that matter you know in the interim stages when you went into adopting a, a, a learning platform both from you know the management side perhaps on one hand and also from the learner side could you share just uh, maybe one or two challenges that uh, that that you came across Okay, thank you very much, Kathy. Uh, yes, uh, some of challenges that we have is again the ability for the learners to adopt the new technology, because as uh, you might be aware in Indonesia, uh, still a lot of uh, people uh, didn't know or uh, not uh, digital, not have a digital literacy. Uh, very well. So uh, the first challenge is how to train them to get familiar with the technology itself. And the second thing is the infrastructure. Because uh, in some uh, remote area, the internet connection is still uh, the main problem. So uh, at that time, uh, they have to come to maybe a larger city to have internet connection. To, uh, to be able to connect with uh, our uh, platform or maybe our online station. That's the biggest challenges. The, the things that uh, we do, yes, we have uh, several trainers in remote area to train them face-to-face. Uh, -face. So uh, to, uh, to make them familiar with the, the platform itself. And after a few months, uh, the the people still uh, can uh, get used to uh, using the platform. And for the infrastructure itself, sometimes we encourage them to uh, gather into a group uh, at some uh, place so can uh, access together to the, to the system. Another thing from the management side, 
yes, uh, we work together with the leader from uh, each agency. So uh, to get their buy-in, how they can support uh, the agent itself to con uh, to do the continuous learning. So uh, that's, I think, the key point on how uh, the agent can adopt uh, the new way of working. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have one other, one new question here. As an LND supervisor, how do I make learning fun and interactive for the millennial workforce? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I think I have the same problem here. <laughs> but uh, uh, what we did is, uh, yes, we have to, uh, before we train uh, our employee or our agent, we have to train our uh, LND stuff, how to engage uh, virtually with the participant, how to uh, create the um, more interesting or more engaging session, uh, especially in virtual way. Another thing that we uh, we do is uh, doing gamification from the uh, for the learning program that increase the engagement and also the participation from the learner. Excellent. We need. Do you have any ideas you want to share, perhaps, also from the? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So one thing what uh, what we realize is that yes, when you look at learning and development for millennials, right? So the platform user experience has to be of an extremely high nature. That means the user interface, the look and feel of the platform, has to be something which is really good. Second is. The content what millennials write like right is very different to what earlier you know employees used to like. If you if you look at the the previous years, content was all SCOM packages, two D flash files where you click on next, next, next. You know today's learner is very very matured in terms of their thought process. They are used to. Instagrams, they are used to Facebooks, they are used to so many other tools, right? So the content format becomes very important. Do you want them to give a content which is next, next? They don't like it. They want something like Netflix style of learning. The content has to be video based. It just comes via recommendation, bite size. They learn it. There are some questions which pop up just to excite them or intuit them. Second is the content could also be a vertical formats for especially frontline workforce. For example, an AIA agent mostly will be accessing the learning on the mobile, right? So the format of the video has to be vertical. And then last is gamification. You know, the millennials love that. They kind of complete certain things. Immediately they collect points. They collect five points on complete an e-learning module, 10 points when they attend a webinar. And they once they accumulate these points, right? they're able to do something with this where, you know, they get a recognition. Like some companies have it as part of rewards platform where you can, if you have 50 coins, you can have a coffee voucher, right? Then there is also, you know, content on Amazon poly kind of format. So content delivery as far as platform is very important. More than that is content format. The content format has to be interactive and the recognition that, hey, I have completed something and I have, you know, gained some knowledge, but also the recognition on the fun side. Hey, I got a free <laughs> coffee voucher. I went and watched a movie, something like that really has an impact. Yeah. Absolutely. Especially in this hybrid work environment or remote environment, I think we need these, uh, uh, these small little uh, wins that come each one's way and, and, and you know make sure they're still part of a larger team and a community so it, it definitely helps I have one question one last question um, you know so I don't stand in the way of lunch uh, from from on, on of our participants I'm going to rephrase it the question is you know uh, what how do you measure ROIs for training programs what sort of metrics you know are, are in play you know is there something that we can share Right. So uh, again, you know, I'm sure it's a loaded question.
question, you know, while it's short, but what metrics do you usually look at to measure ROIs? So, uh, Bukanya, would, uh, would you take this or you want me to answer it? Okay. So, uh, the matrix, you know, they can be very, very, uh, very, very si simple. First thing is important to have it simple. And second, very objective. Like, few matrix which we saw, which were being used very well, was one, what is the learning completion? Like, for example, if you have created an a, a course on let's say digital marketing and if it, that was assigned to 100 participants how many of them actually completed it right the first thing is that if if they have not completed it and the completion is low then it has to be either the delivery was not right the content was not right or it was not organized in a way it was too lengthy one is the learning completion Second, which can be very, very, very simple is, which is tied to a skill. Let's say I'm learning on a skill. A skill might have four courses and I've completed all the four. And my, that means if I've completed all the four, my knowledge on that skill is high, right? So if the knowledge on skill is high, am I able to practically use that knowledge? And your manager is the best person to, you know, agree or disagree to that. So there we have something known as a manager assessment. Where if I have done a, done a skill of digital marketing and I'm reporting to Karthik, does my manager agree that I am 8 out of 10 on digital marketing? So that is very objective, which is defined at a skill level. That means I completed the skill on digital marketing, which had three to four courses. And my manager, Karthik, agrees that, okay, earlier I was at a 6 out of 10. Now he has moved me to 8 out of 10. These are the two great ways of actually understanding whether learning is having an impact, right? And the last one, of course, is how you tie down learning to performance appraisal. If on within performance appraisal, there are competencies which you have identified, basis which you do the performance appraisal, how learning has linked to those competencies and shows that it is an enabler to decide that this person has increased on this his level at that competency. So the third one is a bit more comprehensive, requires a larger thinking, but the first two can be achieved very easily, which is simple and objective. Yeah. Great, great. Thank you. I think I think, yeah, I mean I there's no one line answer to it. I'm sure our colleagues also you know, know that. So I think the, 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 the variety or the, the nature of metrics that can be used and, and uh, uh, are being deployed is a, is a good uh, insight. Uh, Yukanya, no pressure. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Uh, yes, uh, Finet already uh, mentioned all of this. Uh, but again, uh, from the company side, the, the things that uh, they also look at the business result. So all the skills, all the knowledge should be transformed into the business result itself. Great, great. Well, thank you. Thank you for all the questions uh, coming in uh, that, that came in. Uh, apologies if you're not able to take any more. Uh, I, I know, you know, in the Philippines, it's, uh, it's lunch. And I know in Indonesia and Bangkok, where our speakers are coming from, they probably need to jump into the next meeting as well. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Bukhanya, uh, we need for, for taking time to, to share your insights and uh, experiences in this learning session. Uh, this is not the last one of the many learning sessions that we you know, uh, will continue to uh, bring to our uh, HR and learning uh, professionals in the Philippines. Uh, but I want to ask one last question to Bukhanya while uh, you know, she, she disappears from the call. Uh, cheeky though, why why this person, Kanya? Why did you choose this okay. person? <laughs> why? <laughs> because uh, basically, uh, what we need is uh, already completed uh, by uh, it, uh, the platform itself. And the second thing, uh, the system only is not uh, will not uh, satisfy the customer because uh, the man or the support behind the uh, platform 
is also the uh, key uh, one of the key important things so uh, we are very satisfied because uh, we we receive a lot of support from uh, disperse to implement all uh, those uh, platform and also they also guide us uh, also give us advice sometimes if we need uh, to develop another journey or next step from uh, our uh, digital transformation that's very helpful and the next thing is the support uh, or they, they can also provide the uh, problem solver and also uh, uh, customer support is very excellent that's all, also the thing thank you thank you so much for for for, for sharing uh, so generously i think you know knowledge exchange is the only way for all of us to grow as professionals uh, appreciate everyone's time uh, thank you once again um, and and you know we look forward to seeing you in more learning opportunities um, have a great lunch uh, rest assured we will share the recordings of the webinar as well uh, in the coming days and we look forward to your feedback uh, on the learning session so we can find ways to improve and that might be uh, i'm sure sherlin and claire might make that uh, a requirement to before we send the recording uh, thank you everyone uh, take Thanks. care and, and thanks everyone thank you thank you everyone